the type of strategies and things that you've given, they all seem to lend themselves to this idea that, um, at least, I, I'm sure it's not limited to that, but perhaps you can ex expand on that, that we have to kind of teach the Quran memorization should be taken from a perspective of being extrinsically motivated to the Quran. The Quran is, is like, like a task that you just have to do, but your motivation for it is not within the task itself. At least that understanding is something that may be, be or is assumed to be beyond the appreciation of the child, for example. Um, and, and I'm thinking about, you know, I, I just, my own admission, I, I mean, I don't approach it that way with my kids, but, you know, my situation might be different, but maybe it's an interesting thing to talk about is that, you know, I focus on um, like a love and a passion for it. Like, like I want to make sure my kids really enjoy the Quran, being around the Quran, to be connected to the Quran. For example, like uh, a good friend of ours, a very close friend of ours. I mean, he's been, he loves teaching the Quran. He's, he's educated in the various different, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, reciting style and stuff like that. And that's all he does. Um, when he came to us, he was talking about, um, you know, that you know, he's so many different ways of teaching children, you know, like you know, he's got different techniques to kind of twist their arms into getting them to do things. And I told him, listen, um, my kids love you, like, love hanging around with you. You know, teach them the Quran because it's something you love. But if they don't learn anything, no problem. I just want them to really enjoy their time with you. So whenever they think about the Quran, it's it's pleasurable and so there and, and i don't know my kids are not that old so i don't see the upper results but so far what they have been able to do is is they really enjoy the quran they've all got their favorite reciter they start arguing with each other anytime we're in salah with somebody they're like oh that guy was copying him you know blah blah blah. And they start talking about it and stuff like that and they're just kind of like have this obsession with the quran and the curiosity as to what its nuances are and things like that and it just uh, it just keeps them really in the game you know? Absolutely. There's nothing to add to that. A hundred percent. Anything that, as I said, uh, you try to do without the emotional investment, you are going to suffer. Anything that is them not feeling that they are part of the game, and that statement by by definition means that they enjoy it. And if they turn, if it turns into a punishment, a torture, and they don't feel part of it, yeah, and then it's not going to work. It's going to be a problem later on. Now. Obviously, how they connect to it is dependent upon their age and their, their, mature, their, their maturity. Some kids are incredibly mature when they're young, and they do see some kind of benefit intrinsically. Most of the kids don't, of course. They don't understand the language. They don't understand. They're doing it because of associated realities as opposed to so when they, for example, they're competing with one another with the Quran and they're enjoying it so much. It's not actually, not throughout your kids, it's not actually because they actually know and understand anything about the Quran itself, but because of what they emotionally associate with the Quran, the honor that they get with the Quran, the desperation to be connected to the Quran, because as you said, there's associate with a chap that they really like, they associate with an emotion that they really enjoy, that they associate with the reward that they're part of or that they've already achieved. So these surrounding parts and emotions are very, very important to leverage. All about the leverage. It's all about the leverage. You mentioned that Quran, memorization of Quran, shouldn't, shouldn't even be a question. It's it's a base. And what Asif brought up the, the, as a great point, the love, and but it might not result in them memorizing Quran. And I was even thinking from an Islamic perspective that the Sahabas actually set that as a base for their children. Maybe not everyone is meant to be a Hafiz. I mean, we don't see many, I mean, a lot of companions. Even amongst the companions. Um, companions, yes. like some of us in this room probably know more Quran than them. Yes. Right? So so at what what age or what you are looking for to see that, look, you're a, gr you're a great kid, but Rendo, this is enough. Like, you can't, this is not your job. Yeah, like, I think that's a case by case basis. I think what what I, I think the big difference from you know knowing that there were some companions that didn't know the Quran and so on and so forth, is to be countered by the fact that we know of no narration from any companion stopping or not teaching the child the, the whole Quran. You get what I'm trying to say? So there's a big difference knowing what you just said, which we believe that it's not all about memorization of the Quran for them to be practicing and to love the Book of Allah is a far more important than memorizing the Quran. But that is not a legal argument for not making sure every one of our children don't memorize the Quran. So it's a case by case basis where you realize that it's too difficult or some child is not into it or it's not their thing or it's not your thing. It's not yet. Yeah. So let's not lose our minds over the pursuit of something which is a source of immense reward. 
okay, we mustn't forget for a single second that memorized Quran means easier to recite. Easier to recite means more reward. Easier to get more reward means yani, a bigger yani, desire to spread it as well. All the is not possible to compare between someone who has memorized the Quran and wants to use it in the right way versus someone who hasn't memorized the Quran and wants to use it in the right way. There's no comparison between the two, neither for the individual reward and for their collective reward. But a decision needs to be made. Some people are, there are folks out there that can do a great job whilst not having memorized the Quran. There are roles for folks out there that don't even have any connection to the Quran and their, their sacrifices to the deen are huge. That then, then goes also in the negative sense as well. Every attempt for our for every, every one of our attempts to our children to memorize Quran or to learn Arabic or to be practicing or to even receive tarbiyah, all of those need to be measured in a wider reality scale as well. If it's not achievable, if it's not done, we're not going to lose our minds. We tried our best. So uh, I don't want pe people to think that I didn't you know, get the Quran done to my kid or you know uh, it wasn't achieved, the game is over. Not, not at all. There's so much for different people to achieve. There's so much khair to come. And if you, but, but, but at the same time, we don't actively, you know, uh, it's not a, an objective that I don't want my child to memorize the Quran. I want them to be connected to the Quran or I want them to love the Quran. That's just nonsense. I want them to love the Quran and have memorized it. And then I wanted that to be happening, but I couldn't get the memorization. So at least I got them to love the Quran. That's the kind of approach what I'm talking about. Uh, Mashallah, you memorized Quran before you had kids. And in your home, your kids had that role model. Now, many of us, we're not her father selves. And we have, but we do have those goals. What's the better approach? Do we adopt Tarbiya approach where we are focusing on, um, you know, just having them love Quran and then possibly when they hit the age of seven, sending them to a full time memorization madrasa uh, and get it out of the way by the age of nine or 10. I know you made that sacrifice. You traveled with your family to Egypt and had that time. Uh, maybe you can share some of that uh, practical advice. What's the better approach? For, because, I mean, maybe in, in a, if we continue the way we're doing, we're you know, helping our daughter memorize Quran at home, maybe in three, four months, she'd be like, look, I already know more than you guys now. Like, <laughs> get out of my way. Mm. You know, it's just mm. how do we still maintain that? Approach? Yeah, I'm glad, you, I'm glad you said that because I want to make it clear that it's not about, you know, this is not based upon individuals, as you said. I was able to, you know, uh, I found it as the most important thing that I needed to do. I needed to get my wife up to speed as well, myself. I needed to get my kids in an environment where I wanted them to be in a pure Arabic environment because, like I said, I wanted speaking and writing and listening as part of the game as well, not just the actual Quran itself too because I have a certain aspiration for my children. And that is not achievable by a number of people. But I also want to make it clear that being a hafiz or being proficient in the recitation of the Quran nowadays is not so important either. For example, as I said, Quran Explorer, when I said that the actual involvement of the parent, actual involvement, is at two stages. One is to make sure that the ayah is recited properly, and two, to motivate them to keep you know, going. So the motivation is the motivation during the process, it's the building of the entire love around the process, and so on and so forth. Both of those can be achieved by non-hufad. Yani you are, as, as we used to do when we were tired, for example, that we're not going to recite, we're going to sit with you while you listen to it, recited far better than myself or yourself can be, yani hearing, slow, measured from verse to verse, then hear it back and so on. And this allows the parent to develop as well. Yani this is not just the one-way traffic that is just the kid developing. If the parent now needs a little bit of help when they're hearing the verse also again and again and again, like my, but by the way, my wife was not half of the, yani when, uh, half of the when I married her and she completed her hivs during the teaching of the children. So I want you to know that this is not something for the Hufaz. This is not yani, something which is just restricted. Her, uh, 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 a person's own personal development continues. You know, one of the things that, I'm, re I'm really glad you said this because I want to emphasize in these final kind of sessions, this message, that we always think about children, 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 yani, and I make it to be you know, the be all and end all. But I also want to give you the other side. Children mean nothing whatsoever and neither do your parents, and neither do your family. Ultimately, you are going to your own grave. And in all of this huge act of effort yani, and ibadah, we sometimes forget that, right? We sometimes put ourselves very, very much second, right? And it's always got to be about you, you in the framework of everyone else. 
And if we start to kind of think that it's all about yani, you know, giving my child deen and not about myself, you fall into that secular kind of hockey mom, yani, what I should call mosque mom paradigm. Right, which is the drop off the kid outside, not walk in because I don't wear hijab, don't want them to see me, and I don't, I can't produce that example for the kid. Don't know any Quran either, so I just drop the kids off and then pick them up, and that, and I'm hoping and I'm praying that they turn out to be nice, good kids that are gonna get married to the kid, that, the guy that I want them to, and live in a cultural Islamic thingy and able to recite a little bit of Quran when someone dies. That's basically their aspiration. They're not gonna set foot in the masjid because they're expecting all the magic to occur in those two hours. Right? If we are thinking that that is the model forward, then that couldn't possibly be further from the truth. All of this has to be about self-development. Yani all of this has to be about our self-expression of Rahmah as the Bukhari's hadith have focused on. It's no fluke that those last hadith that he closes his chapter on are all about Rahmah on you, you, yani the impact that it has upon you in developing your self-skills of patience, you gaining the reward of going through the process. So I really want to say that we mustn't think about this as an expert-driven process because the person who is doing the tarbiyah can always be replaced, even by a robot, even by a, a, an, an internet connection. And what about teachers? What about people who are online? <coughs> the, online plan, the online platform in terms of uh, qualified teachers on Skype, on Zoom, on various programs that are going through your child's uh, uh, recitation and spending the time and hours with them. Or for example, they're the ones who started off, then they go away, I'll come back in about two, three hours. Then your job is not even to do anything but then to keep the person engaged, the child engaged, motivated through the boring process of doing them, the, all the repetitions, which is coming from a position of love and motivation and excitement with all the associated things around the memorization of that. And then it gets presented back again to that same teacher, whether it's the next day or whatever, which is, by the way, the classical way of scholarship. When we used to go and study, for example, when I went to Mauritania to sit with Sheikh uh, uh, Muhammad Salim al one of the great, great scholars, and I will now go and tell people that I studied with Sheikh Muhammad Salim, people think, yani, that's it, you've done, you, 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 you've smashed it, you are the greatest scholar on the planet if you sat with him. People don't realize that we would sit with him for five minutes in a day. At Fajr time, you would have a list, and you would, uh, the, all the students gather around, and you take a slot. And he comes out after Asr at that period of time and everybody gets five minutes. Five minutes to do what? All day we are memorizing, explaining, understanding amongst each other, amongst the student teachers, amongst whatever, whatnot. And when you go and sit with him, you've got five minutes, no flapping around, okay? This is why when you see students of knowledge, you understand that they don't take up the time of the teacher. They, they, they go and they memorize everything. They do all the research. They do all of the study. They study their question. They rewrite it. They rewrite it. They rewrite it. They know they've only got five minutes. I'm not going to flap around with this teacher. I'm going to go, bam, I'm going to put out the question that, that I could not answer myself. And I went to the maximum effort of answering all of the things that just a little bit of searching, a little bit of reading, was able to do and now I've got access time and in that five minutes he would want to hear us recite what we've memorized explain via via one or two questions the text that we're meant to have understood and then get an opportunity to ask him some questions so we have to have that relationship with some teachers if we can't be the teachers themselves so we do all of the groundwork which doesn't require any skill whatsoever just the motivation of the child put them in front of the camera we only where the session is and they're listening with their expert ear correcting changing correcting changing so no it's not something for experts obviously self-development and the more that you do preparation for uh, uh, is going to help that's why it's so important that married couples sit and have that discussion and start study beforehand, Arabic beforehand, Quran beforehand. A lot of people say, this course is not for me. I'm not married. I'm not, I'm, I don't have children. I say, this is the only course for you because the way you protect this house is you prepare for the protection beforehand. So absolutely, it's for folks that can do it and folks who can't as well.